Everybody in the team know where you're at with the work, so it has to be in a context. If it's not contextual, it's again an arbitrary status. I know RTC, that's the whole individual interactions over processes and tools. It's a cumbersome tool, you've got to boot it up, you've got to refresh the screen, you've got to do this and that. So if you're a co-located team, and I told the Scrum Master that, create the visual board too. Well, that's, yeah, her team has that, but... Scrum Master should get there five minutes early, have the yes. screen up just so people can point at it. This is what I worked on. You know, it's all about transparency and having everybody know what's getting worked on. Otherwise, yeah, you're doing really well. It drives me crazy too when we, for RTC, when they go in, they're like, story, net on 1624, I'm working on tax 2357. And you're like, I feel like I'm in the development room again, like talking about DB2 and DataCom DG. <laughs> and it's just like talk English, speak about the story and the, the actual task you're working on for that story. Yeah. So again, there's you know there's an opportunity even for the highest performing teams to become more transparent. Because if we don't have the transparency, um, again that's one of the three pillars, right? If you're not doing that transparency, then you're kind of missing the goal. Spread the view meeting. One month spread every four hours. It's one hour prep, and this is basically what this is saying to the developers: don't spend a day preparing for the sprint. Okay, this is supposed to be quick. You should have any sorts of tools and things in place, so you're not spending time demoing. Because every two weeks, if you're spending hours and hours demoing, you're not doing work. The product owner can invite anyone they want. Okay, the product owner at this point would should have accepted all the work. Okay, so at this point. You should not be seeing the work for the first time at the sprint review. That's not the intent. The intent is to push it out to the uh, organization, let everyone else see what has been built. This is your opportunity to make sure that your stakeholders are aware of what's going on. So the product owner explains what has been done and what has not been done. That's the product owner's job, okay, not the scrum master, because you're the one that owns that backlog. The development team demonstrates the work. This is an opportunity for the development team to show what they've done. This is not a sales presentation by the product owner. Product owner discusses where the overall backlog is. Okay, if they're working on a release plan or anything else, they say this release, this uh, iteration was part of the overall release, or this iteration, you know, uh, is part of the overall vision. And the entire group collaborates on what to do next. So this is an opportunity to have your stakeholders there, tell them what you built, tell them what you're going to build. Is there anything that you don't know that needs to be? Included in the next sprint planning meeting. Because this is right before the sprint planning meeting, which is either the same day or the following day. So this is your meeting to understand how it works. No one to um, blame but the product owner if the sprint review doesn't go well. You guys have to have accepted the work, make sure it's done. If it's not done, we don't even talk about it. We'll talk more about that. The retrospective is time blocks three hours for a one month sprint, so in a two week sprint would be about an hour and a half. It says in the guide that the product owner is optional, but I always recommend the product owner from that perspective. It's all about open feedback. And it's important to incorporate that feedback in the next sprint as we talked about earlier today. So I'm not going to spend time on this next question. Just about out of time. Well, much, but I do want to.